Good afternoon or good morning, wherever you're located. I am going to do a pre-recording of touching up edges and defining a lot of the shapes from for our painting that we're working on, our still life painting. And so um, what I have on my tray is the color from the background plus white because I basically want to make sure that I can get in here and line up some things really nicely. So I'm going to use a small to medium brush. I'm going to start here first with a zero brush and come in and get those edges nice and clean. What I want to do is I want to grab um, my white first and scoop it over to the edge. We always want to start with our lightest color, okay? And I want to get really the same shade as that background as much as I possibly can. And uh, we are still using our acrylic paints okay burnt sienna and white is what we have here on our tray so what i want us to do is try to get a light shade of that background color and you're really going to have to hold the brush closest to the fair this time and get really close to the edges and one continual flowing line going down okay so i'm hoping that you can see that really good okay i'm going to do that one more time for you we're going to go one continual flowing line letting the edge of that brush really hit the edge of the object and don't go back over that line because right now you can see there's a really nice, clean, hard edge. And I did load my paintbrush up with enough paint so that I did not have to stop and reapply the paint. Okay, so once you lay that brush down using the tip first and then gradually start fading down. Do not lift up with that brush until you have completely come to your edge ending, like so. Now what you can do is you can add more color into there, the burnt sienna if you like, and um, really start fading that edge into the background even more like so. All right. Now, remember that this painting is going to be a different color. But what I want us to do before we get to that is to really clean those edges up. And I leave that just like that. And I go above and clean up that other edge. If I have to fix that, I go back from to the beginning to do that. And you can see that I did that right there. And we're gonna load our brush up again with even more paint. Try, if you want to, you can scoop a lot of paint over into that mixing area so that you don't have to keep repeatedly mixing a color over and over. So find another edge if you can. Find another edge that really needs to be cleaned up even more and fix that if you like to. I'm thinking right up in this area is also where I need to clean up some more. So I'm gonna get you over there into that section so that you can see really uh, closely that it has some rough edges, okay? So I'm gonna take my brush and I'm laying it onto the side, all right? And I'm gonna try my best to get one continuous flowing line, okay? Without stopping, okay? one continuous line without stopping if i have to go back over it because it didn't work i will okay but i do not want at all to stop i 
until I have cleaned it up exactly the way I want it to be cleaned up. See how I just did that? Nice and clean. When I use the color that I'm going to do with for the painting, I'm going to use that same method for that particular color. And I'm really, really, really enjoying this. Mm, I don't I don't really know right now what color. Uh, the shades of brown. Let's just say these shades of this beautiful brown. I am enjoying these shades here a lot. So more than likely, I'm going to stick with these colors probably in that background, okay? And don't be afraid if you kind of mess up a little bit, just go right back over it. Again, one continuous flowing line, keeping that angle exactly where you need it to be. See how that really cleaned up those edges, all right? And so I wanna get a little closer up here in that section right there and then i'm going to go along the edge here i have some pencil marks that i want to get rid of so let me mix myself some more color there starting on that edge and bringing that color in going with the flow okay you're going with the flow of that shape don't change the shape, okay? You're just going against the outline of it. I always say that if it's a dark line, you might want a light shadow. If it's a dark line, uh, I mean a light line, you want a dark shadow up against it. Yeah. There we go. And let's blend all of that out into that background. I'm going to grab a little more white there because I do know that my light is coming off from here to my right. So I want to line that up really, really good with a little more white. Now, you know what's going to happen when I give this a little more highlight? is really going to bring contrast to the shape of the lantern even more, okay? Because that light is hidden up against that dark. Again, dark against light and light against dark really pushes the contrast of your object even further into space, giving it a three-dimensional perspective and there is where it comes in as, wow, that looks really realistic and, and really nice on canvas or in, if you're using paper or any other medium that you're using. I find this trick here, that light up against the dark, really, really beneficial for me. Okay, now generally, if you want photorealism, I always say somebody should be the photographer <laughs> because I really like brush strokes. I like when an object has beautiful brush strokes and it looks like a painting. I don't want my painting to look so much like a photograph. I could simply just <laughs> um, take a photo and do photography if I wanted that look, okay? But I do not. I want those brush strokes to be visible, all right? And so far, I'm liking those edges. Right down here, I'm going to also 
I'm going to need my uh, burnt umber now to blend. And this is the burnt umber that I use. And I'm going to use that burnt umber right in this area and that shadow. And the highlight on the sides of that lantern. And the reason that I want to do that is because it's uh, we switch colors, okay? I'm gonna use that same number brush. I need to come over here and smooth this out just a tad more. So we don't want any hard edges and lines in that background. Um, it's okay up against that object to push its dimensions, but right there we don't want that. So I'm gonna grab that burnt umber, put it over to the side, and then I want white, okay? I want white first over here. And then if I have to get a little darker, I pull some of that burnt umber. Okay? And then I'm noticing there's a little sienna in that highlight down there. So what I want to do is do the same thing. I want to clean up that edge just a little more. There, right there, cleaning that edge up. Giving a little more crispness. Grab me some more burnt umber so I can fade. It's fading right there. Try your best not to mess up your shadows that you have with um, too much darkness, okay? There we go. A little more burnt sienna right there. All right here is an awkward color. I don't even know how I mixed it. Oh, I found it. It was just a little more burnt sienna than anything. And I'm going to go right along this edge right there. All right. There, there we go. Fade that into the shape. And I'm looking at my reference photo too, because if I need to draw with the color just a little more, I'm gonna do that. Because I'm really, really focusing I'm trying to get that shape exactly the way it needs to be. Highlights and all. A little more darker over here in this area there. There's a darker shadow there. And this is just the burnt umber by itself. Right. Touch ups. Touch ups are very important in my opinion, for your painting, especially when um, you first start off painting, okay? You wanna define those shadow shapes as much as you can. Remember that this allows the painting or the objects, in our case, to look more realistic. Yes, to look more realistic. Pushing Pushing that three-dimensional dimension, areas really well. Right now, I'm using that burnt umber, okay? And so, make sure you get those edges nice and cleaned up. I do see in my reference photo a little sliver of light right down there. So, I'm going to get some of that white and pull it in. There we go. Right. And even more white right here in that highlight. And that shadow is really a reflective light. So it's the light in the shadow. And I want to put that. I want to make sure that that is visible. It's not white, white. But it's light. <laughs> the light in the shadow is still a part of the shadow, I can go a little darker on that. Okay, it's still a part of the shadow. 
Let me grab some of this burnt sienna with. There we go. I'm still using that number two, guys. No, number zero brush, excuse me. Number zero brush. Burnt sienna. And this is not a hard shadow. So I don't want any hard lines. I'm going to keep it nice and soft. How about that? There we go. A little more of that sienna in there. Mm hmm I really enjoy this painting so much. I just almost started painting on it. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself for class. I did. I almost started painting on it this week because I got so excited about what colors and how I wanted to do everything. But I said, no, I'm going to wait to make sure that you guys have gotten um, yours up to date and everything. There we go. Awesome. Yes. Let's bring this here shadow a little bit more down. <laughs> and so that's going to be it for now. And I will see you guys later.